This is the Alfa Romeo Giulia GTA. The Giulia is our favourite sports saloon, and this is it having been given the hardcore treatment, like a Jaguar Project 8 or BMW M4 GTS, which I like a great deal. Now you will find details of those elsewhere on this channel or at autocart.co.uk. The GTA costs around £150,000. It's priced in euros, so it depends on the exchange rate. There will be just 500 of them in either standard GTA form or, as seen here, as the GTA M, which gets a roll cage, no back seats, and plastic rear door skins, rear side windows, and rear window. Common to both is a 2.9 litre V6 engine, with its output increased over the standard Julia Quadrifoglio to more than 530 horsepower to create what we're told is a brilliant all round road car. How brilliant and how all round? Well, we're going to go on a road trip to find out to fabulous country roads, but first to a motorway. So, yes, the motorway. Now, I know. I wouldn't usually do a motorway section in a car like this, but I think it is worth knowing if you buy one of these and you're going to take a road trip to Spa or the Nürburgring or the North or the South or wherever, you, wherever you're going to go to go to a track, what a habitable car this is over distance. It's actually still really supple. It retains, unlike some specials, air conditioning and an infotainment system. Noise levels are, you know, despite the fact that the back seats have been kicked out and there's polycarbonate rear windows, noise levels are pretty low. This is a very habitable car. I've got the gearbox knocked into drive. It's at sort of 50 miles an hour. It's, I think it's probably in seventh, in eighth gear at 70. It's still turning over at less than 2,000 RPM. This is a very civilized car. Now, the one exception, of course, is the fact that it's got six point harnesses which are, you know, great on track, but on the road, all they do is really sort of, you know, cover your lockdown flabber. And unless you have this three-point inertia reel plugged in, it will still bong at you massively. So what I would say, if you do wear the harnesses, even on track, it's worth getting one of those one of those little buckles that car dealers use just to clip into the, to the thing to stop it bonging all the time. But this is an extremely usable car on a motorway. However, I suspect it will be at its best on a decent road. So that's where we're going, where we expect to find out just how agile this car is. Depending on trim, this GTA M is around 100 kilos lighter than a standard Quadrifoglio, and as well as the interior and glass changes, there are a carbon fibre bonnet, roof and front wings to take even more weight out. We weighed a Quadrifoglio at 1700 kilograms exactly when it was full of fuel. The road test is at autocart.co.uk or in the magazine, all good news agents every Wednesday. So let's call this just 1600 kilos at the curb and that is sports car territory in a sports saloon that is the right sort of size for back roads. And so then to country roads, which is where the GTA and the GTA M are designed really to excel. And the first thing to note, if I whack the gear lever over into manual, is just how quick this car is. So the headline figure is 533 horsepower, 540 metric horsepower, and 60 in, what, 3.6 seconds? But it feels quicker than that to me. And torque converter autos don't get off the line that quickly as a rule compared to like twin clutches or something with a really good launch control system. So I suspect this car is faster than that 60 time suggests. It's also relatively short geared. This is not like a Porsche Cayman GT4 where you have to wind it right out in second and third. If I slow it to sort of 25 miles an hour or so in second and then let it rip out, it revs to seven it shifts to third well before 60 miles an hour. You could argue it feels short geared, like really short geared, but actually because there are eight speeds, unlike a seven speed twin clutch or a six speed manual, I'm at 50 now and it won't even take eight. So it's got a really broad set of ratios and I really like that. It feels as you shift via these column mounted paddles, in and out of corners and stuff and you use second, third and fourth quite regularly on twisting roads. It gives you a lot to get on with, keeps you involved and means it's very easy to stay in a power band. Even though this engine makes a lot of specific output, it's got 2.9 litres for 533 horsepower so it's got a really high specific 
specific output. Peak torque comes in at two and a half thousand revs and it never feels like you're desperately out of the rev range, even if you even if you do stick it in a high gear and lug it out. So I've got three drive modes to choose from. It starts in N, they're called DNA. N, I suppose, for normal at which the ride is soft as we sort of found on a motorway and it's a pretty laid back cruiser. The steering weight doesn't change as you go through but the damping rates do. So when it's in N it's got its softest damper setting on the go. When you flick it through to D that damper setting gets much harder but if you push that button it puts it back into soft and then if you are in D and you click and hold again, that then puts you into race, which gets stiffer still. And then if you push the damper button, it puts it back into the middle setting, which is the standard D setting, if that makes sense. Anyway, the nicest one for me on roads like this, but actually I think also softer, smoother A roads too, is the sort of middle setting, which is what you get when you put it in D. That also turns up the exhaust note a bit, but thankfully leaves this steering, which is really smooth, really linear, really accurate, sort of quite light, not overburdened with feel, but I think you kind of know what, what, the, what the wheels and tyres are up to at the front. I think it's nicer in this suspension setting than any other. Now, what I really like about this suspension, even in its mid setting, is that it still retains that kind of flow and fluidity that marks out the standard Julia Quadrifoglio when you put it against things like a BMW M3 that are that bit harsher, that bit more pummeling. This, even though it is firmer than the QF, still just sort of glides over bad roads. It's never harsh, it never gives you bad inputs. You don't get big kick back through the steering. It's a really lovely car to drive on poor roads. And the handling is good. It turns really quickly. It's got really fat tires. It's got loads of grip way too much grip for the road but hey what hasn't I'm not going to slide it around on the road because why would you why would you do something that I don't know the police could look at and go mm, yeah I'm not sure we really like that I'm followed by a chief inspector on Twitter I feel I don't really want to see um, he doesn't really want to see me going sideways on the road I don't suppose but the fact is this is a really keen steering car really turns really nicely there's a little bit of lean as it takes up things and when in the right conditions it does start to move around it does so in a really beautiful progressive style this car just like the Julia Quadrifoglio in its standard form is a brilliant brilliant sports car a superb sports saloon this might be the best sports saloon I have driven for years I think it's mega in short, the GTAM is all the money, but it is superb. It is all the car, which may be no surprise. The standard Quadrifoglio is still our favourite super saloon, and this car is even better. For more on the QF and other super saloons on road and track, see elsewhere on the channel. If you subscribe, click the bell icon, you won't miss one. Thank you so much for joining us. I really do appreciate it, and we will see you next time.